Zambrot or Anthony Grant, you will learn how to play defense. They both do a great job man-to-man. -man. I actually like Dayton when they mix things in with a little 1-3-1. One, one. Yeah, last month, Duquesne was ahead of Dayton with six minutes left, but they watched the Flyers go on a 22 to nothing run as Dayton swept Duquesne in the regular season. In trouble, Clark kicks it out to Mahorchich. Got off to a good start, hounded by Bennett to Michael. And a rebound inside to Edwards. Bodied up by Santos to the left hand for the first bucket tonight. A couple of quick observations. Duquesne's guards are much bigger, and Dayton is not an incredibly physical team. I think that the Dukes can hurt Dayton on the offensive glass. Had to Ron Holmes last three times he's played against Duquesne. Double doubles. Enoch Cheeks misses. And the man who just scored there, Trey Williams for Duquesne, rips down the board. Fun to watch Clark and Grant, unless you are a fan of the team defending them. And a turnover there, the early travel against Clark. And Duquesne is guard-driven and dangerous. They're 13th in scoring. They, they, they really try to be patient, but if, if they have an Achilles heel, they struggle through scoring droughts, talking about the Dukes. Well, how big is it to have Jav Javon Bennett back his first season? Playing after transferring from Merrimack, missing the last two games, as Caroline pointed out with a thumb injury. Elvis deep inside, and we're all tied. Well, you're exactly right. And the reason Bennett is so important, he puts everybody else in their natural position. Kobe Brea, who I thought was the best sixth man in the league this year and should have won the award, he now gets to come off the bench as the spark. Second travel call back to back. One too many steps there called against Williams. And as long as you bring up Rhea, how about the fact that he is number one of the nation three-point shooting? If he makes his first from distance tonight, Tim, he's at exactly 50% for the year. It's hard to do in practice. No, and it's hard to make layups at that percentage. Javon Bennett with the ball right now, first season after playing at Merrimack, number one in the Atlantic 10 in assist to turnover ratio. 17 to one his last three games. Mohorcic with his second rebound. Duquesne lost its first five games this season. Things not looking so bright at that point, but then they won three straight in the Atlantic 10. They've won seven of their last eight heading into tonight. DeMichael. Well, that was pretty. He knew right where he was going. DeMichael has done such a solid job this year. Keith Dambrot said that he actually saved the season. You know, what he offers is the ability to make those threes and then also his defense and scouting report prowess is so good. You know, Cheeks in and out. Team that's number three in the nation, not only number one in the Atlantic 10, can't find it early from deep. To Michael, walk on freshman, didn't play a lot. November, December, minutes have gone up as the season has got longer. Hit a couple of big threes yesterday in round two. Grant pull up blocked by Holmes. He's got Elvis out front Slows it down Now he's got Elvis again yeah, At all times Deron Holmes is surrounded by four guys that can make a shot and Look at the size difference Bennett is covering to Michael If he wants to go inside he should have opportunities Grant lost his footing there, kicks it back to Mahorchich. Now nine to shoot. Deep three. Both teams struggling from distance early. Holmes had a good box out there. It'll come back here to Dayton. Now, let's take a look here. A lot of misdirection going underneath the screen. It's a beautiful offense. It really uh, kind of interesting when you watch the scoring slumps that Duquesne has They can avoid those by having long possession you have five pass possessions where everybody gets a touch And Kobe Brea in the game once again sixth man of the year in the conference Enoch Cheeks got it in tight missed Duquesne unbeaten in March played four times won four times George Mason VCU George Washington and St. Louis last night in round two. Second season in a row, they've hit at least 20 wins. Dumps it into Matorchich, and he's fouled from behind by Holmes. 
Fourth and final game of the quarterfinal round here in Brooklyn, just underway. The sixth seed video shooting layups and jump hooks and dunking the ball. This year, before the game, I watch him and it's completely different. He's shooting all three pointers, he never goes into the paint at all. It shows that he's working on his perimeter game because that's what the NBA desperately wants to see from him. Do you remember who was calling that game with you at Duquesne? Yeah, freshman year? good looking guy, handsome guy, very strong. You only had him here. <laughs> but he had 18 points that day that when he was a freshman. The first time he really jumped out to both of us and said, that they may have something here in this big guy from Arizona. And, and Paul, the thing that he does is run so hard. Yeah. You know, I, I've had NBA scouts tell me they think he's a, a second round pick, a G League player. Completely wrong. This kid's going to have a really good NBA future. You think a potential first round pick? If, if he leads his team deep in the NCAA, that will do nothing but enhance. Looks like we're. Looked like. Oh, what a pass to Santos and from behind Dixon with the defense. And a late foul call. It seemed like a lot of contact. And those are the plays you worry about. Great cut by Santos. And he got kicked in the head after the play. You know, Nate Santos is such a, a, a massively important success story. Last year he was at Pittsburgh, barely played. I think that Santos should have gotten a lot of consideration as the most improved player in the entire league. It was his first season here after a couple of unproductive seasons at Pitt. You see it right there. ACC tournament last year, the one game he played eight minutes, two points. Decides to come here. And where do you start when you when you make a change like that? How much more am I going to play? He led, led the Flyers in minutes here during the regular season. Nice steal by Enoch Cheeks to get that one back. Now Cheeks gives it right back. Dixon. Clark. Keeps it himself. Pretty finger roll. A good idea to get to the rim. Why? Jerron Holmes is off the court. There's no shot blocking at all. An initial hesitation from Kobe Alvis. Beats to Michael. He hustles, though. Everybody got pushed from behind. It'll stay right here with the Flyers. 21 to shoot. I'm not sure where he's going with this pass. Probably looking for a pick and roll, but a careless handle. And I'm looking at the Decane bench, and they must be so energized to see the one, two, and four seeds get knocked off. That does nothing but give them confidence. Yeah, that's Richmond, that's Loyola, and also UMass getting knocked off in the three prior games in a meeting here on the court. The fisticuffs, uh, some emotions down there. And at this early point of the game, they just want to make sure they get in the middle of that. A lot of pushing and shoving. He knocked Cheeks in there. Yeah, Drame is there. That's just a message that we're not here to mess around, guys. We're going to be physical. You've beaten us twice, but you're not going to do it tonight. The Digimus just checked into the game. Cheeks to Santos. Looking to get it to Pedigimus inside. Seven to shoot. Gray is first. Well, if he would have made that, that would have been 50% for the year, his first miss. Jimmy Clark into the bucket a couple of times. That's a wonderful look inside to Dixon. How long do you leave Holmes on the bench with one early foul? I can promise you this, that Duquesne is going to go right after him every time because if Deron Holmes gets his second foul, your job gets a lot easier. Whistle inside against one of the backcourt stars for Keith Dambron. That's Day Day Grant called. So Holmes with the rare, the rare rest early with his side down 9-3. to three. And Dayton, the best shooting team in the conference. They have six players shooting over 40% from the field, but they're only one for eight so far. Well, Santos has a size advantage inside if they can get him posted up. Brea trying to open up, only three seconds to shoot. Santos caught the steps before he went to the ground. Yeah, this in no way is what Anthony Grant was looking for. They're very challenging when you're going up against this Duquesne team. They are so darn physical. They bump you. They breathe on you. 
they push you, they put your hands on you. It's just, it's a really confrontational style. You know, you, you, you can't spell Dambra without D. There you go. Well, that's a nice play by Javon Bennett. Firing it off Dixon to give the ball, to get the ball back to the Flyers. And let's see if they can get their offense going here. This is an offense. I mentioned how well they shoot the ball. Best shooting team in the Atlantic 10. Last two games, they've hit 100 points, 91 points. But here we are, six plus in, and they have only one bucket. And see if they're able to go to Holmes. You don't know how long he's going to be able to avoid at a second foul. So you might as well try to post him up. A quick double team comes. Aaron pass to Michael. All the way himself. And he's called for the foul. Foul called against Bennett on to Michael. He goes to the line. A tough pass. Right place, right time. And to Michael is a, a really fun story to watch. As a walk-on and as a freshman, he's starting. And Keith Dambrot said that he saved us this year. Very solid all-round player. But how many freshmen walk-ons start? I think we need to get a movie company or somebody. It's, <laughs> it's pretty early. It could be a good Disney movie. It's, it, it's a nice story right now, for okay. sure. Okay, but he has to go ahead and write out the, um, the script. There's his high school. Two-time state champion, also two-time player of the year in Class 2A in Pennsylvania. Used to winning his team at 1.168 consecutive games in high school. Didn't have to go far, five minutes away there to campus for Duquesne. It, Meanwhile, we've got Dayton as many turnovers as they have points inside of 13 and a half minutes left in the first half. There's a good touch to Holmes. And so often you see that when he gets it in that close one-on-one -on -one coverage, likely a bucket or two free throws. That, that's a tough angle to pass the ball from top. And it's a tough matchup as well because this Duquesne team has so much length on the front line. And, They've got about 25 fouls that they could use to try to make life hard on Holmes. They're going to let him shoot free throws, but not dunk the ball. Two fouls on Dixon. He's the third leading scorer behind Grant and Clark. And he's going to check out. So, Jerron Holmes against Duquesne this season. I mentioned that the total is 57 points there and 23 rebounds. And that is just domination coming in off of three double doubles in a row. You know, against this Duquesne team. Go ahead, Tim. When, when Deron Holmes decided to test the NBA waters last year, they told him second-round pick. So he came back to work on his game. And I think he's moved into a first-round position. Not lottery, but, but definitely guaranteed money. That would make sense for most people who've watched him play these last couple of seasons. Rozier in the paint. Tight coverage there from Bennett, but he drops it right over the top of him. And Duquesne, it's awfully early, but off to a 12-4 lead inside of 13 minutes left. Whistle. And a foul called against DeMichael. Or pardon me, against Rozier. It, it really looks like Dayton is trying to ease their way into this thing. And that's a dangerous way to play. With their offense, and I've watched them play so many times this year, their best offense is when they have sharp cuts. Crisp passes when they're all involved with touches. I mentioned five pass possessions earlier. I think that's a good recipe for success. Bennett misfires, and now they're one for nine shooting, racing down court as Duquesne already up by eight. Knocked off St. Louis in round two yesterday to earn the right to be right here. Grant wants to get one off, does. And the rebound to Brea. Well, Dayton comes in with five days rest. And on one hand, it's great to have fresh legs. And that's another good look inside. And some more strong defense from Tromba. I thought that was going to be two for Holmes. And the defense of Duquesne has really been the theme so far. Yeah, and, and once again, this, this is a really good look inside. But I'd like to see Holmes gather himself. You know, take the ball and make a big circle with your arms. And what that does, it clears space and gives you a chance to go up and try to dunk the ball rather than finesse it. Drame is not going to let them get to the rim. Last month, the Dukes have played eight times. They've lost only once. Forced the ball inside. Foul called against Santos. 
just inside of 12 minutes. Fourth and final game here, the quarterfinal round, Duquesne. And, and it shouldn't be a surprise when, when you when you look around the A-10, if you took a poll of the players and said, who do you not like to play against? I think an overwhelming number would say Duquesne. And nobody likes to play against that defense as you labeled it confrontational. Drame finds his way to the bucket. He thought he was fouled, but Duquesne has a double digit lead. We've seen the underdog win all three games so far. It's awfully early, but the Dukes are up by 10 as the number six seed. Bennett, Santos, and there's their first three. And that's what they do positionless offense. They're number one in the A-10 in field goal percentage, number one in three-point percentage because they spread the court and have such good shooters. Made four out of six threes in the last game. Rozier finds his way in, and the ball's stuck. Possession arrow points right back here to Dayton. And once again, this is what Bennett does so well for this team, the ability to drive and kick. Santos, a lot to like about him. Two years at Pitt, he's really improved his three-point shooting. Hit double figures in four straight and eight of the last nine games. That was the first three for the best three-point shooting team in the A-10. With Bennett going against Rozier, I like the small point guard matchup. These guys are lightning quick. Bennett at 5'10". Cheeks considered the three, back up top to Santos. There's the guy who shoots it best, Bennett. And the whistle inside. Santos looks like he is the guilty party. And foul called against Santos for the Flyers. The hard thing with Duran Holmes is that he's so talented and so versatile. He scores in a lot of different ways. Sometimes when you're going up against a big man like Drame, it's not like you can go block to block or go middle screen game and roll him to the rim. He scores more in random ways rather than we're going to run our offense, we're going to run these three or four plays to make sure we target him. Jimmy Clark sprinting down the court, gives it up to them. Uh, just checking into the game there. Matush Ronsky into the hoop. Clinic being put on by the Dukes so far offensively. Grant with another two. Quickly to Holmes. Rejected. Offense, quick defense. Grant for three. And Cheeks comes back. He's got Elvis to his right. Keeps it himself down the lane. And one. Yeah, big bucket. Hasn't really been appreciated as much as he should. Enoch Cheek, 6'3", plays bigger than that. He's a stopper on D. Last year, he played at Robert Morris College and averaged 14 points per game. Two-year starter there, he not only brings in that scoring ability and does not make good on the possible three-point play, but also experienced 63 starts these last couple of years. You can really tell Anthony Grant not only was targeting talent, but guys who were a little more grown up, too. Paul, I, I'm looking at the, the defense and wondering how long Dayton is going to take to go to their 1-3-1. It's a really good defense. Enoch Cheeks picked that one off. A race to the basket. And he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, a bit surprising. On this steal, Cheeks could have gone up and stayed on the right-hand side. He went to reverse it. And I'm not sure why because there were two defenders there in his way. So with Javon Bennett out of the lineup in the backcourt the last couple of games, as Caroline pointed out, he started practicing Monday. Signs were, were positive he was going to play. Did start the game on the bench right now, but Cheeks has really pushed up his production. Double figures in four consecutive games. And in that time, has been averaging 15. Yeah, and, and his ability to defend is the best thing that he does. You know, there are times that players jump into the portal prematurely, but Enoch Cheeks is not that guy. Like, for him to experience what he's experienced in this conference, on this team, has been such a tremendous learning experience for him. Almost had another steal right there. Do you think he wants to go to the NCAA tournament? I mean, he's ready right now. Dayton appears to be the one team that 
if they get a win today, is guaranteed to play in the NCAA tournament this year. Want to revisit that. Clark for three. Way off. Holmes with a rebound. So they come in at 24 and 6. You think they, they will get in to the NCAA tournament with one win here in the tournament? Yeah, one. They're at a, a 21 in the net rating right now, and that tells me they will get to the NCAA tournament. You don't want to lose the first game and put any questions out there. The Diggy miss misses. Clark with the rebound has Ronsky looking at him. Wants, wanted to use him as a pick, didn't get it. Net just number seven is checked in. Keith Dambrot will play as many as 12 throughout the night. Little pull up for Grant. Well, these two guards, they don't really need to be open to have the green line. Their offense is called the Clark Grant Show. They, they basically can run their offense try to get their big guys the ball but when the shot clock starts going down they can just rise up and get their buckets as you pointed out earlier 37 points combined last night the foul called inside as they try to defend Deron Holmes this is what I mean about not really being that open quick step back and had Bray on his face but it didn't matter three-year starter at Miami big-time shooter and when you watch him shoot a free throw Paul you can just see how beautiful his release is. Clearly, he worked on it as a kid, and he's, he's been groomed and he's been mentored because he has got just the purest of shots. Miami of Ohio, three years there. Now, he's been a scorer everywhere, Tim. Fourth year in a row, averaging in double figures. Earlier this season, went over 2,000 career points in and out for Holmes, and the offensive struggles continue for the third seeded Flyers. Picked before the season started, almost unanimously, to win the Atlantic 10. They come in with those 24 wins. Started out with six consecutive wins in conference play, won nine out of 10. Leveled out a little bit. They had a stretch where they went three and three, but did win their last couple of games coming into the tournament. Shot clock down to three. Grant inside to Mohorcic. Dumps it to Netches. And did he get that off in time? So the ball back to the Flyers. They come in as the number three seed. Won 24 out of 30 games. A lot of good things about them, but really shooting has been their best. Best shooting team in the A-10, but tonight they're only three out of 15 to start. Cheeks, seven to shoot, hops into the lane. Draws another foul, he'll go back to the line. Already been there a few times, he's made two out of three tonight. Paul, I really like the Flyer offense, and here's why. They have an All-American center, and you surround him with four elite shooters. Also, they value the ball, only 10 turnovers per game. Now, this is a big opportunity for Jack to come in for Holmes. Holmes has one foul, but you want to make sure he stays fresh so he doesn't get the second one. Are you surprised that, that they continue to keep him on the bench with the, just that one foul? I, I'm not because of the fact that, that this seems like the kind of game where drama is taking him out of what he wants to do. I, I think that, that you let him sit for another minute, maybe minute and a half, then put him in to finish the first half. It's amazing. We're going to hit the 7.30 mark. Six free throws made by Dayton, one three-pointer, and only three total field goals. Day-Day Grant to his sidekick, Jimmy Clark. Goes baseline. Did he step out of bounds? Yes, he did. Yeah, I remember back on January 27th, prior to the Fordham game, I talked to Keith Dambrot, and he said... You know, Tim, we are the worst offensive team in the A-10. They had lost six of seven. They have improved so much since then, and I think a big part of it is their big guys are finding a role. Santos gets it on the block. The turnaround. Isaac Jack puts it back in. Now Dayton has one more field goal than they have turnovers, and they only trail by three points. For as abysmal as their offense has been, Anthony Grant should be thrilled that they're right there. Look at the flyer faithful on their feet. They travel really well. Jimmy Clark says, I've heard enough of that. That date easily. 14,000 per game leads in attendance in the A-10 at home. 
No surprise, they've got good travelers. Right away, a turnover into the hands of Day-Day Grant to Clark. Mahorchic inside, fouled by Jack. At any point, Clark or Grant, and that's Clark, will pull up deep and do that. You know what I like about his shot? Watch his feet. He lands in his own footprints and holds his follow-through. It drives me crazy when I see shooters that they shoot the ball and they take off back to the other end before the ball even gets close to the rim. That's not good fundamentals. Clark and Grant both are exceptional in that area. They've combined for nine points so far. Six seed of Dukes up by six. Grant got a lot of elevation on that shot. Pretty off the glass. Yeah, I love this start by Duquesne, and I call this an upset start. They're playing with so much confidence. Enoch Cheeks misses from three, tipped out. Bennett had a chance. Cheeks gets it back. Santos. They've gotten a lot of good looks from three here, Tim. They're just not knocking them down. They're now just one out of eight. Yeah, and the longer that Duquesne stays with this lead, the more confidence that they're getting. Winning big time on the rebounding part of this game. A little bit better than two to one. Advantage Dukes to Michael. Extra step, yep. Now, I don't want to make a mistake that I made last game, okay? So okay. when I talk about the fact that Duquesne played last night, and I use the theory that they've got to be a little bit tired, a little fatigued. Well, you know, VCU and St. Bonaventure and St. Joe's, they played before and they all got wins. So I'm throwing that out. And as we pointed out early, Dayton coming in off of five days rest. The foul again inside. And one of the problems when Holmes is in there, he draws a lot of attention and often a lot of fouls. You know what I watch Keith Dambrod's teams defensively? The word that I like to use is bully. They're kind of like the bully on the block. They bump people. They're very physical. They make it half court where it's really hard to be able to get a shot. If you can get out in transition and score against them before that defense sets up, that's a great idea. Well, Holmes well short on that one. Holmes right now 0 for 2 from the field and 1 out of 4 from the free throw line. And remember, when these teams played earlier, Holmes absolutely dominated the Duquesne Dukes. Duquesne dominating the rebounding game so far. They've also made over half of their shots. They turn it over that time. But if you had to pick the defense or the offense for the Dukes right now that's leading the way, what would you say? I think it's their defense. There are no open shots for the Flyers. And if you're just looking to post up Holmes, it's not going to be easy for him. There's a number of really good post defenders for Duquesne. Bennett playing for the first time after missing the last two games with the injury to the left thumb. Gets it inside. This is exactly what they want. Now the double team. Santos for three. See if that gets him started. His second deep ball of the night. Now we've got an injured Duke there just outside of the lane. And that is Trey Williams. Well, it's a rough year for Trey Williams. He dislocated his thumb earlier this year. Well, Santos made four out of six threes in the last game. He's had a message for the Dukes. There must be a lot of talking out there. Each time he's hit one, and that's twice tonight, he's turned to the nearest Duke or to their bench and had something to say. No need for that, right? I mean, you just sent a message with your shot. That's all you need to do. Dukes have led this entire game. 4.30 left in the first half, up by five. Playing for the right to take on St. Bonaventure, not tomorrow, but Saturday in the semifinal round. Well, he was just hurt. Now he goes pretty off the glass. Trey Williams. Lead back up to seven. Bennett to Holmes has been known to hit the three quite a bit more this year. alley -oop. That was interesting. A little bit of volleyball there. Big guy back to the little guy. Yeah, for I'm, two. I'm curious if Holmes actually tried to tip that in or if he saw his teammate and delivered a beautiful pass. DeMichael had that one swatted away. It'll stay right here on this side with the Dukes. 
I want to talk a little post. Ron Holmes, the co-player of the year in this conference, leads the A-10 in scoring, has one point. The challenge for Dayton, they are the headliner in the A-10, and everywhere they go, there are sellouts, and it's the game of the year. Their four conference losses on the road, two of them had court stormings after it, and I kind of liken it to the way that Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls were in the NBA. Everywhere they went, everybody wanted to beat them in the worst way. Preseason pick as the best team in the Atlantic 10 and also preseason favorite for the best player, Deron Holmes. Santos has already hit two. And that was a good open look there inside of three and a half left. Duquesne has led the entire way. Their largest lead has been 10. They enjoyed that just inside of 12 minutes left in this first half. And their defense has been getting the best of Dayton this entire game and their offense has been shooting better than 50% the entire time. Ball stay right here, 10 seconds to shoot. And, and you know, I, I don't necessarily agree with what Keith Gambrot said because they have 10 guys that are averaging double figure minutes. I don't think foul trouble is a huge issue. I think that their defense has been A plus so far on home. Their resilience has been good all season. They started out 0 5 in the A 10 and have come back to win seven of the last eight. Seven seconds left. That is a deep three. Off of the hands of Brea. 22 seconds now for the Dukes. Now, even though Duquesne lost twice during the regular season to Dayton, they did lead inside of six minutes or right at that six minute mark. Last time they played to watch the Flyers go on a 22 0 run. It looked like they won easily, but that was a battle. And it's been a struggle here tonight for the Flyers. Three seconds to shoot. Netches. Boy, the things are working, Tim. Lead up to eight. You know, if, if one of these teams was, was going to be evaluated by somebody that didn't know who they were, Duquesne is actually the team that is operating their offense and getting shots that they want, more so than they. Brea, the best three-point shooter in the A-10, gets his first to go down. That part is good news for Dayton, but they are continually making it tough for Deron Holmes to get quality touches. Duquesne shooting 55% as we hit the two-minute mark. Drame for three. Nowhere close. Holmes. More rebounds than any player in the A-10. Most recent one right there. Javon Bennett. Looking back to his head coach, Anthony Grant, it's the message. Brea just hit one. Air ball. You don't see that very often. Neither team really shooting the three that well. Duquesne is only two out of nine, but that just, just freed up to make true from right there. And Brea. Best shooter from distance in the A-10. You knew he'd hit one at some point, and there's his first tonight. Such a beautiful player, and I, with his ability to shoot, I think that, that he will have a chance to get on an NBA team someday. Clark, boy, if he would have hit net just right there on the seven, he might have fired another one. Day Day Grant. One-on-one. -on -one. Neither one of these guards does that so well. So yeah, Day Day Grant now with six. Clark has seven, and the Dukes have the lead back up to seven. Holmes, big first step in, and he was fouled by Netjes. That'll earn him two shots. You made a good point on Grant's drive, how he and Jimmy Clark seem to work well together. A great example of that is Clark is regarded as one of the best power guards on the defensive end in college basketball. Day Day Grant went up to Keith Dambrot and said, Coach, you know, I think I could be a better defensive player. Dambrot is so proud of the fact that now both of his guards are regarded as very solid on the defensive end. That's a pretty darn good mentoring. Well, every time we've seen Duquesne play, you know Jimmy Clark is going to end up, and Day Day Grant has kind of followed the lead on the best player and give him, if not the worst night of his season, a long night and some hard-earned points. 
Deron Holmes from the free throw line gets it back to five, but he has still only made one, one field goal so far tonight. Pardon me, he's 0 for 3. Just got corrected there. He has not made a shot from the field. Co-player of the year in this conference. Inside of one minute now. If they hit a three, though, they're only down by two. Rhea working on to Michael. Bennett for three. And there's that two-point deficit. And that's a good sign because I was worried about Bennett having a brace on his thumb, how he'd be able to shoot. That looked beautiful. Yeah, brace on the left thumb, shoots with the right hand. Dayton fans have been waiting to get on their feet. They pretty much fill up the side across from us there in the red and blue. Five seconds left in the half. Clark has it picked off by Holmes. This would count. That'll be well short. On the Dayton side, Anthony Grant told me, well, we're playing like a team playing its first game of the tournament. We just need to settle down and do what we do. Caroline, thank you. A number of things going in the favor. They've earned that for Duquesne, but they've made over half their shots. More than twice as many rebounds as the Flyers as well. Mohorcic considered the three, driving in against Holmes, going to work. Jump hook is off, and a rebound to the top rebounder in the conference. You know that Deron Holmes is not going to be shut down for much longer, so this is an opportunity right now to go into the bag of tricks and see how you get him involved. Elvis had a good look in the paint. Got it back, 20 new seconds. And the ball kicked out of bounds by Mahorchich. Duquesne led by as many as 10 points. That was about halfway through the first half. And as I mentioned at the top of this of the second half here the flyers have not led yet coming in as the number three seed on a day where all the top seeds have gone down getting inside the lane and deron holmes will have a chance to tie this one from the free throw line where he's only made three out of six so far tonight Attacking the paint is a great idea because it's going to get foul trouble issues for the Duquesne big men. You know, when you look at this season, it really is pretty remarkable what Dayton has been able to do, especially when Malachi Smith, one of my favorite A-10 point guards, went down in the first game with an injury. It was seven minutes and 23 seconds into the first game, done for the year. Javon Bennett was thrust into the starting lineup and when he came here they anticipated that he would be Malachi Smith's backup what a great opportunity for him and from down 10 they still haven't led but Dayton now has this game tied Jimmy Clark Day Day Grant have combined for 13 points Jake to Michael what the scoop the runner in, and that earned him a couple of shots. I'm not sure if that's what Keith Danbrod wants him to do, but the trip to the free throw line is a trip to the line. A lot of chaos for Duquesne this year. Mid-January, they had lost five straight games, and they had, had slippage on defense, all kinds of new players everywhere you look, cold shooting. What a good testament to... Keith Dambrot that he was able to keep his guys together. Remember, eight players are new. He has seniors and transfers and grad transfer. It, it's really a nice story so far. DeMichael makes one out of two for Keith Dambrot and lead back to one. For the Dukes, they come in here hot. Lost their first five, eight, ten games, but they've won seven out of the last eight. Won yesterday against St. Louis to keep their season alive. Bennett hit a big three late in the first half. That one short. Sky in for the rebound. There is Trey Williams. You talked about Clark. He's with the ball right now. Gets inside. Gives to Mahorchic. I don't know if he saw the basket, but he got it to go. You're right. He was facing more towards us than he was the rim. Really a fortunate finish. Very strong inside. Falcon. Javon Bennett just attempted that three. It'll stay right here. Bohorchich, but they run in so many players for the Dukes. Nine different players scored in that first half. And Bohorchich gets that one to go.
Bennett gives it up to Holmes. And it leads the A-10, assist to turnover ratio, but only one helper so far tonight. That'll work. First basket for Deron Holmes. And you give a big man a dunk. Let him see the ball go through the net. His defense, his rebounding, everything should get better. Well, Mahorchitz was going to go up there, and he got fouled. Second possession in a row. They've got it in deep to him. Boy, this is just a relief for Anthony Grant, Deron Holmes. First basket for the conference player of the year. Deron Holmes looks like a pro. He walks like a pro. He works like a pro. He's going to be a pro. Going down as one of the great players in Dayton history. In his third season, numbers, both scoring and rebounding, have gone up a little bit each of those three years. That's a fine lean in there. And one. David Dixon. Was the only Duke in double figures last night besides Clark and Grant. Good decision there to go toward the basket. See if he can make that a three-point play. That's his two fouls now against Holmes. Dixon is so long and athletic, and, and he makes those wow plays. I think you said wow on that, actually. But that's a really important play because now all of a sudden the same scenario comes up with Holmes. They're going to go right at him because if he gets his third, he's going to have to sit for quite a while. Dixon now with five points. Clark leads the way with seven. Grant just behind with six. And the next part of Holmes' game is the ability to put the ball on the floor a few times to create. Right now, he's basically catch and go up and shoot. Well, that earned him another trip to the line. Good post position, a defensive mistake. Everything was really good, forcing a tough shot. I personally would live with Deron Holmes shooting from the perimeter. He's made five out of eight free throws so far. It's been the best part of his game. David Dixon, by the way, plays an important role as the best big man for the Dukes. That was his third personal foul. So we'll see if the free throw line can get Holmes going. If he can take a cue from one of the best upperclassmen in the game we just saw, St. Bonaventure. Daryl Banks wasn't shooting the ball the way he normally does, but kind of came alive at the free throw line, and that's how he jump-started his big second half. Maybe Holmes can do the same thing. I'm a little bit surprised that early in the year, Jerron Holmes was showing that he added a three-point shot to his arsenal. We don't see that very often anymore. Well, there's a three from the big guy on the other side, Fusini Drome. Neither team shooting the three particularly well. Duquesne just three out of 11. But that one puts him back on top by five. Flyers trail by as many as 10 in the first half. They came back and tied it. Three from Enoch Cheeks won't go. Good battle there from home. Santos three. That's good. He's got three of those this evening. And remember, one of the best defenses in the Flyer arsenal is their 1-3-1. We haven't seen it yet. I bet we do. Dixon stays in with those three fouls. And that is not against Holmes. That's a foul against Enoch Cheeks. Yeah. If the threes are going down for this Duquesne team, they are so much better driving to the basket. There's no tool in basketball that can open up the post game and the drive game more than a three-pointer, especially from the corner. Santos, the only flyer right now in double figures with 10 points. Grant, turnaround. Rebound to play up. Normally the top three-point shooter been slow going for him. Santos had 21 in the last game against VCU. And that was five days ago. They've had a nice rest here, the Flyers. This is their first game of this A-10 tournament. Holmes, you said he could shoot the three, and there it is. That's what I've been waiting for. His shot is beautiful. I watched it before the game. Nail three after three after three. They're playing off of, I think it's something that's underutilized in his game. About 15-34 left in the second half. That's the first lead for the third seed of Flyers. That's a quick trigger on the three. 
Santos knocked it back to Brea. Last possession, Dayton went up for the very first time. Kobe Elvis wants to get it inside the homes to the lane himself. Santos, well short. And Duquesne now, they we watch them play with the lead and they flex their muscles, especially on defense. And now it's just a one-point deficit with playing from behind for the first time tonight. It doesn't seem that Clark and Grant have the same energy that they did last night or at the first half. Combined for 37 points last night. Rossini, Clark. Charging in there is Rossini to keep that alive. Grant to Michael. Step back three. Dayton fans don't like that call. Or Let's jump back into the broadcast. We don't, we don't even need you, Paul. <laughs> we'll, we'll take it from here, okay? Just spend a little extra time with the stats and what's going on. Holmes to the bench has a game high 12 points and also five rebounds. Second half has been much different than the first half. Mohorcic has one bucket early, three seconds to shoot. Good defense there by Padigimus. Rebound to Santos, and here comes Bennett. Missed the last couple of games. Practice for the first time on Monday to Michael with the rejection. Bohorcic to Grant. Does not have numbers. Gets a step there. Back to the Michael. I really like this lineup right now for Duquesne. They've got three scores, two role players, and a pretty good idea. Did you notice Holmes went out in the game. Duquesne went to the paint twice and came away empty-handed. Yeah, both of those times, Tim, they get it into Big Mahorchich there. Lost his balance that time, so he missed from inside last possession. Traveling there, score remains Dayton on top by one. Fourth and final game here this quarterfinal round. It has been nothing but upset so far. Number one, Richmond started the day by losing to St. Joe's. UMass has the four seed loss to VCU. And the game we just called in double overtime. Saw St. Bonaventure claw and fight and finally get back and knock off number two seeded Loyola. And we'll see if a favorite can come out on top for once here today. Duquesne may have other ideas. Double team on Holmes. Bennett slashing into the lane. Six to shoot. That's the best three-point shooter in the nation. And I think Padigamus touched that in the cylinder. Yes, he did. We'll come back here in the game. Yeah, I think he touched the rim, which is the same thing. That was a really good possession, though. And to get that shot was excellent. See if he touches the rim. I guess it's a combination of both. The ball looks like it was still above the cylinder, but you still cannot touch the rim. That was the mistake. Day Day Grant waving his teammates down to help out with his full court pressure. Now we've got Padigamus and I believe Dixon there. The officials stepping in to make sure it doesn't go beyond just a little bit of pushing there. Okay, not Dixon, that's Drame. Dayton fans who have made the trip making their presence felt here. And just like we're always going to keep track of Deron Holmes for Dayton. We do that with two guards here for Duquesne, Clark and Grant. 13 total points. That's the exact same number they had coming out of the halftime break. And we're seven minutes into the second half. Mahorchich, again, they get it to him. Three possessions in a row. He has it in the paint. Nothing to show for it. Coming back here to the Flyers. Very much old school man-to-man -man defense. That's what Anthony Grant does. And you can look back at his history. BCU, Alabama, now at Dayton. He was in the NBA at OKC. And now they've got the number one scoring defense. Anthony Grant is an exceptional defensive coach. Seventh season, leading the way for the Flyers, looking for that first Atlantic 10 tournament title. Coming in here at 24 and 6 off a of five day rest. Bennett, two assists so far. Holmes just hit his first three double teams. Three seconds to shoot for Elvis. Way short. Three point struggles continue for the Flyers. They've made six out of 19 now. And it's surprising because that may be the best thing that they do. They use Holmes to be able to get three point shots away from the ball. We've been stuck on this one point lead at 40 39 for a while. Foul call against Elvis. 
And Duquesne has missed their last six shots. I really enjoy watching Anthony Grant's team play, play defense. And really, it's a culture that they've had for a while. Think back to Oliver Purnell, Brian Gregory, Archie Miller. All of the Dayton coaches are all disciples of good, solid man-to-man -man defense. Anthony Grant, very good player, both sides of the ball, mid to late 80s in his time as a flyer. Former captain there. Tough jump hook. Dixon, rebound inside. New 20 seconds here. Rozier's checked back into the game. Day Day Grant, deep three. Well off and the rebound to Brea. Well, we've been stuck on this score for quite a while. Turn it over right. Dayton and Duquesne, remember they're off tomorrow. They get a rest. They get a chance uh, to kick their feet up a little bit, watch a little film before the semifinal round on Saturday. Is today the day you just don't want to wear a white uniform? It's been bad luck. White uniforms, higher seeds. Started out this morning with Richmond going down. Dixon, good look inside. Holmes had his hands on it, eventually corrals it. Has the most points, most rebounds in this game, even though it has been a battle most of the time. Did not have a field goal made in that first half, but has been much more himself in the second. Santos, been the best three-point shooter in this game. Holmes had it knocked away from Dixon. Not an and one, but two free throws. Yeah, that's a sign of a star player when they're having an off game by their standards. Holmes is not himself, and part of it is the physicality that they bring for Duquesne. Those are some big dudes that are physical. They're not afraid to lay the wood. They're, they're just so, so aggressive and tough. Hey, Duquesne has not been shooting the ball nearly as well here in the second half, Tim. They were above 50% in that first half, and now they're just barely above 40%. Tale of two halves for how the Dukes have been shooting. And meanwhile, Deron Holmes, as we wondered if he would early in the second half, really getting himself going at the free throw line. He's been there more than any other player here so far. Right now he's made 8 out of 11 shots. You see the difference there between the first 20 minutes and what has happened after halftime. And he really put on a demonstration the first two times that they played. As a matter of fact, Duquesne averaged 60 points per game, so the flyer defense was so good in those first two meetings. From down 10 to up three for the third seeded flyers here. Again, Clark and Grant have not scored in the second half, almost at the halfway point. Clark, quick first step into the lane. Has a wide open three for Rozier. Tie game. Rozier is such a good leader. Keith Dambrot actually told me he's one of the best leaders that he's ever coached at the point guard position. Continue to get it into Holmes, and it pays off. And one. I like the finish, absolutely love the pass. One of the things that as Deron Holmes matures and grows, his ability to hold his position when he takes the hit is going to be a big part of his game. Right now, we can still get knocked off balance because when you watch him play, he's got a very high center of gravity. And with the intangibles, the demeanor, the confidence, the experience, reacting the way you think someone would as a conference player of the year after a bad half. His numbers, but you wouldn't know he had a bad first half. 17 points and eight rebounds as the Flyers back up by three. It's kind of like with Obi Toppin. We watched him become a star. Now all of a sudden that translates, his high character approach translates into being a really good NBA player. Pretty touch there by Trey Williams inside. Patience. And then the left hand up over the top. One point game. Holmes has one three pointer. Netjes with the rebound. So now it's Duquesne that's been waiting for a chance to take the lead. They can do so. Rozier just hit a big three. We hit the nine and a half minute mark. Flyers Dukes playing for the right to take on St. Bonaventure in the semifinals on Saturday. 
Rozier. That's where he hit from just a little bit ago. Holmes had it poked away. Flyers ball. To win this game, Duquesne's going to need Grant and Clark to be a lot more aggressive. They're hanging out at the three-point line when they're totally capable of getting to the lane. Holmes pick, Cheeks into the lane. And a rebound from Rozier who takes off. Gives it up to Clark, finds Netjes. Back up top to Dede Grant. Bucket will put the Dukes back on top. Edwards just scored inside and does so. Had a great chance to do so again. Two looks inside. And Holmes with a rebound. My goodness. Mm. What a brilliant move. He did 95% of it really well and missed the layup. Elvis finger roll and pushes that lead back to three. See a bunch of Flyers fans standing up and pouring their friends who made the trip east here to get up and join them. That's a quick first step from Clark to the left hand. Veteran move to the basket. And both Clark and Grant need to do more of that. They're playing a little bit too much outside in when I think that inside out is a better idea. Clark leading score for the Dukes now with nine. Kobe Brea. Top three points through the nation has one in the first half and that one in the second. Flyer lead back. Temperament out on the court. Flyer showing a little bit of full court pressure here as well. Cheeks and Elvis says they back out of it. Also, Dayton doing a much better job rebounding the ball and shooting. They were out rebounded. They watched Duquesne make more than half of their shots in the first half. It's the Flyers shooting better and out rebounding Duquesne now in the second half. Clark draws the foul from Santos. You're the people I love. And what he does, no matter where he is playing, is make three-pointers. Came in just under 50%, 49.7. Free throw good for Clark. You know what he's shooting tonight? What is it? 50%. That's what he does. I, I, um, I love his passion for the game. And when he came on the scene, he was just a shooter. He's added other elements. He can put the ball on the floor a little bit. And that makes him so hard to cover. I, I kind of want to go sit with his family. That looks like a fun group up there. With a headset extend over there? I, I don't. I probably should stay with you. I'm afraid what you'll <laughs> might, say if I'm not here to keep an eye on you. I might be in trouble here playing both roles. Cheeks, tight defense there. Does get it to, off to Santos. Player of the game in the second half has been Deron Holmes. Well, that's a nice spin inside. And once again, he'll go to the line. He's already been there 13 times tonight and made 10 of them. And notice the recognition. and Pretty smart because... Holmes knew that defensively that Drame was going to come if he went middle. That could have been a block, but once again, you can't tell because Holmes never shows any emotion. He never complains, never throws his hands in the air. The biggest reason Dayton has come back to take the lead is that they're successfully getting the ball inside to Holmes, Tim, and he's getting to the free throw line. Should they change up defensively what they're doing? Maybe double team, some kind of zone? No, I like what they're doing. And the, the ability to wait until his second dribble to come with the double team has been very effective. You know, sometimes you, you go at the, the offensive player immediately to make him pass. Keith Dambrot is waiting for the second dribble. Holmes, 19 points, 10 rebounds. One point away from his season average. Clark trying to work Cheeks fade away. Nice defense. Another rebound for Deron Holmes, his 11th. Up to Elvis, back to Cheeks. Chance to take their biggest lead of the game. Didn't lead a single time in the first half. Elvis to Michael rebound. Well, the offense has changed quite a bit here, at least the production for the Dukes in this second half. This is the pace that Keith Dambrot desperately needed, though. Something low scoring, very physical. I, I think he likes where he's at right now. 
One-handed jump shot there. Rebound to Santos. Always a good idea to go to Holmes. I think he should get a touch every third possession. Not necessarily always looking to score, but because he gets doubled, that means you're playing advantage basketball on the weak side. Rozier with the foul called right there. And this, this is exactly what Dayton does. Now, normally they, they play better in the first half, but they are as deliberate of an offense as you'll see in the Atlantic 10. They'll take a fast break and a transition if it presents itself, but what they want to do is set up, get all five down there, and try to get Big Holmes a touch. Best shooters in the league, and it all sets up with their game plan. Cheeks misses the front end there. Grant goes down. Grant Clark been a whole lot more quiet here in the second half. Grant with the ball right now. But this is exactly how we've seen the other games today. Really good defense. And with the underdog having a great chance to finish with a win. Draw a long rebound out to Grant. Might try a three himself. Nowhere near. Big finish inside for Dixon. Back to a two-point game. Cheeks sat and picked off by Grant. Spots Clark. Take it himself. Tipped up. They keep it alive. Draw me to Michael for the lead. Yes. Uh, to Michael is Mr. 3 and D. He nails threes and he's doing a really good job defensively on Kobe Brea. St. Joe's took down number one, VCU. The fifth seed in St. Bonaventure sent number two home. Duquesne trying to do the same to the third seeded Flyers. Brea, 10 seconds to shoot. And the foul called inside. It'll be one and one for Santos. The drama is just a physical specimen. He's so athletic, he's long, and he plays hard. And DeMichael gets the three points, but it's Drame that did the work that made it so easy for his teammate. And it was Dayton doing all the work to try and come back and keep it close in that first half, and they trailed by 10. Came back with a big three from Bennett to cut it to two at halftime, then quickly took the lead. Well, that's not even close for Santos. Flyers have led for most of the second half. Duquesne just came back to take it 53-52. Four and a half left to play. Now called well away from the ball against Dayton. Dayton now has seven fouls, so one and one coming up here for the Dukes. So do you think if you said to Keith Dambrot earlier today, yeah, you're going to be leading with 428, <laughs> how happy would he be? This would be so improbable because of the fact that Dayton steamrolled them the both times that they played earlier this season. But you back up to the six-minute mark the last time they won, it was the Dukes on top, so that they're used to being right there with them late. They just didn't finish at all as Dayton went on a 22 to nothing run to make it look like they ran away, and they did late, but they had to work for it. 96% isn't going to miss too often. He did miss once last night. So interesting to me that these games are very, very close, and I talked to UMass head coach Frank Martin yesterday and asked him about that, and he said, the scouting reports are so deep in March Everybody knows everyone's tendencies down to a T. And he said the seniors get very laser focused on closeouts and all the little things. They don't overcommit. They become really good stoppers. Brea, he made two of those, trying to end a 7 to nothing run here for the Dukes. Instead, with that rebound, it'll be Duquesne with a chance to make it 9 nothing or possibly 10. I worry about Holmes out there. Can they do defensive work? Can they rebound with Holmes on the perimeter? Dede Grant is the one to make it a 10. Nothing run and a six-point lead. Javon Bennett calls a timeout. Anthony Grant has seen enough. I'm surprised it's ever happened. And I talked to St. Joe's coach Billy Lang today. Talked to the Bonnies coach Mark Schmidt.
they said that they think it's a disadvantage for the high seed team to sit out and then have to play a team that had success the previous day. Dayton hasn't played since Friday, five-day layoff. Holmes has been very good in the second half and won. Very strong move and a good idea. That's the purpose of that timeout, making sure everybody knows that your star player needs a touch inside. Also, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a zone defense for the first time today from Anthony Grant. Meanwhile, thinking about the big guy on the other side, Dixon checks out with his fifth foul. That's major news. Normally the other score besides Clark and Grant in double figures for Duquesne to the bench for the rest of the game. Holmes has 22 points, 11 rebounds. Fourth consecutive double-double against these Dukes. Now their lead is three. DeMichael just hit that big three, gives it up to Clark. Has some space in the lane, kicks it back out. DeMichael with the runner, high off the glass. Back to a five-point lead. DeMichael with the outside, then the in-game to help his team late in this quarterfinal round. Inside of three minutes left. Bennett to Brea. Top three-point shooter in the nation has two tonight. Could that be his third? He's missed two in a row now. Clark says slow it down. Got these 25 seconds left to shoot. Duquesne beat St. Louis last night. Quick step and a step back. Good open look. Another rebound for Holmes. Santos spots Brea. Passed it up. You don't see that very often. Flyers down five. Holmes to the basket. Wrapped up possession arrow will stay right with the Flyers. Paul, that is the entire possession. Deron Holmes was standing back and beat number two seed Loyola just a little bit ago. Into Holmes to the basket. Holmes has 24 points. Dayton trails by three. Two minutes left for the number three seed Flyers to be the first team with a higher seed to win here today in the quarterfinal round. To Michael, to Grant, 10 to shoot. One on one against Holmes, five to shoot. Gets a step, fade away. Santos comes up with it. 130 left and a three point deficit. Going to Holmes is always a good idea. The last two times he's had it inside, he scored buckets on both of them. Let's see what tricks they have to get the ball into their big guy. Already with 24 points, spin to the bucket. And it was at a foul call, jump ball. Possession will remain here with the Flyers. I still like the play. Excellent recovery defensively. And, just... and now the arrow went back. It was initially pointing toward Dayton. Arrow now says ball belongs to Duquesne. Well, that's surprising because I immediately looked at the possession arrow and it was pointing in Dayton's way. Why did it all of a sudden switch? Well, that's the quick discussion there. I don't see any change yet. It'll remain with Duquesne. One fifteen left, up by three. Jimmy Clark dangerously in close to the lane, back to Grant. He's the one you want with the ball, 96%, number one in the A-10. Ten seconds to shoot. Jimmy Clark down to six. Fade away three. What a three points to push the lead to six. Largest lead of the second half for the Dukes. Holmes for three. Tried to get him back. Rebound Day Day Grant. Another lower seed getting closer to moving on. 
to the semifinal round. Foul called, 31.4 left, and Duquesne sitting on a six-point cushion. If you would have told me at the beginning of the day that the highest seeds would all lose, I would have said, no way. And what a beautiful delivery by Jimmy Clark. Yeah, a lot of people call him Trey Clark. You can do either one because he just knocked down a tray that might put them in a position to win against Dayton. He'll have the one and one free throw. You see there, he doesn't have the percentage that his sidekick Grant does. He's just inside of 70%. Two for two today. Make it three for three. That lead growing to seven. And for Dayton, their net rating, their Ken Palm is very strong. But you hate to lose in the first game of your conference tournament and raise any questions at all. Inside of 30 seconds now. Santos, good look from three. No good. Net just rebound. Back to Grant. Duke's getting closer and closer to the semifinal round. 15 seconds left. Jimmy Clark with the ball. St. Joe's has moved on. VCU, St. Bonaventure. And now Duquesne will join them. Coming from behind in the second half, all the lower seeds today moving on into the semifinal round. 